I'm Dave Scott. I receive all sorts of questions on Dave Scott Tri Club, my membership platform. Nutrition is a gigantic topic. And I received a question from Otto Ryan about having a very high sweat rate and having difficulty in the race, maybe maintaining uh, his output, and he thinks it's a sweat related loss. So I want to go over just a couple things. First off, generally going into a race, it's easy to gain one to one and a half percent. Uh, body weight. So as you finish out your race week a couple days before, a lot of people will gain weight. And a lot of times if you're carbohydrate adapted, it's water retention. That's okay. Be careful that you don't go up any higher than one and a half percent. So think of that one and a half percent. You can do your math. Second thing is, is that it's not just sodium that you have to replace. I think we would besiege that you need more sodium, sodium chloride, and a lot of heavy sweaters, which you referred to Auto as a very heavy, heavy sweater will need anywhere between 1,500 to over 2,000 milligrams per hour once you're on the bike. And then if you're maintaining a steady pace on the run, if it's hot and humid, you'll probably have to maintain that same uh, out intake of sodium and sodium chloride. Where we are missing the ticket is that you also need to maintain potassium. And if the potassium levels are too low on your exercising day, your race day, it draws out the sodium and it puts a lot of stress on your adrenals. So in simple language, you have to have potassium to complement the sodium. Potassium's on the inside of the cell, sodium's on the outside of the cell. There's a fine pump that regulates both of these. So too much sodium will draw the potassium out and that causes an imbalance and generally there's going to be a slowdown. That's a simple way to state it. So take a look at the amount of sodium that you're taking in. Typically you'll have a one to three or one to four ratio of sodium to potassium. Quite often a lot of the drinks that are out there don't provide enough potassium and you can also take a potassium supplement just like you would uh, taking sodium in maybe from a tablet or whatever form that you have. So be cognizant of that. Last thing is that magnesium works in harmony with those first two. Some of the available drinks have magnesium in them as well and that's something that you should be taking as a regular supplement. I like magnesium glycinate, it's easier on your stomach, but I really prefer magnesium threonate because it permeates the fat soluble membranes. The other forms of magnesium do not. So here's my suggestion. You can take mag magnesium, heavy sweaters up to a gram a day, spread that out, breakfast, lunch, dinner, and possibly post-exercise. Take the threonate at night. I would take 400 milligrams of the threonate because it will also help you sleep and it's good for your digestion. So, big question. I cover more on DSTC. I hope that gives you a good start, Otto. Yeah. Hey, if you've liked this information and the content in the video, uh, please hit the subscribe button. I love pumping out the informational type of YouTube videos, so stay with me.